Hello everyone, this is Jan from Kyoto University. Today I would like to present our paper PGLP, Customizable and Regular Location Privacy Through Policy Graph. This is a joint work with Emory University, Kyoto University, and Samsung Research America. So this is outline of my talk. First, I will give you uh, some basic idea of our motivation why we need a customizable and regular location privacy model and present our solution policy graph based location privacy uh, short for PGLP. Uh, this model provides a flexible interface for location privacy to train privacy utility trade-offs. And also uh, we proposed um, a framework to release location trees uh, using PGLP. There are some challenges and the countermeasures I will talk about. And then I will show you the experimental results and uh, conclude the talk with some future work. So first, um, first thing I want to say is um, location data is valuable but sensitive. So as you know, location data has been widely used in a lot of applications and very useful in our daily life uh, for a lot of apps, uh, weather forecast, Google Map, Uber, and so on. And also fundamental in many research areas like IoT, spatial processing, smart city, so all these uh, applications depend on the collection driven by bigger spatial temporal data. However, not easy to share looking data because uh, looking data uh, collecting from the real world reveals many sensitive information like uh, people's identification, uh, home, office, lifestyle, hobbies. As you see in the red figure, from this figure we can see uh, this guy probably uh, live uh, live here around Kyoto University, and uh, in fact, this is me. Um, so it is very really risky for companies also because a company who utilize uh, such a kind of sensitive data need to care about GDPR, which has uh, fined a lot for the uh, big companies like uh, Google and for Facebook. So. The question is how to protect location privacy. The general idea is to add uncertainty to the true location before sending to the third party or any untrusted party. And the algorithm in between is called LPPM, Location Privacy Protecting Mechanisms, which transfers the true location to a noisy, noisy one by adding a kind of randomness. For example, if we want to ask such a question from an untrusted server. What is the weather like tomorrow near my location? So I need to send my location to the untrusted server. So I can send my precise location Kyoto University so that I can get precise, the precise answer. But to protect my privacy, probably I can just send a weak location like a Kyoto city. What is the weather like uh, tomorrow Kyoto city? So uh, it's easy to understand there is a trade-off between privacy and utility. So a better uh, LPPM could uh, provide better utility with the, same, uh, with the same privacy. So the general research goal is a better trade-off between privacy and utility. And there has been um, study a lot for uh, location privacy definitions. Basically there are two families, one is extended from key anonymity and now it's extended from uh, differential privacy. Uh, so the state of art uh, privacy definitions are uh, geo negotiability and data location side privacy. Uh, however, we find that existing location privacy definitions are not sufficient. Why? Because um, the two families, the first family key anonymity based location privacy is not rigorous. And for the differential privacy based location privacy, it's not customizable because it only uses one parameter epsilon to control the privacy utility trade off. Uh, however, different location based services may have different requirements on privacy or utility. So, uh, here at least some examples uh, about different uh, location based services so we can see that they, in, in fact, they have different requirements on the utility. For example, for the city level uh, weather forecast, which um, provide uh, uh, the city's uh, weather forecast, weather information. So uh, such application um, needs the location of uh, where, where you're about of, of the city level location. 
So the utility provided by the application would be higher if the noisy location is in the same city of the true location. So for another example, location-based advertising, uh, the advertiser may want to know the category of your location. The category, I mean, it is a shopping mall or it is a restaurant or a gym or somewhere. So uh, the advertiser can send you food-related coupons if uh, you are in a restaurant, can send you some health-related coupons if you are at the gym. So uh, this is a, a different uh, utility uh, measurement uh, compared to the first one. And next, uh, another application is uh, location-based social network provide functions like uh, where is my nearest friends. So the utility of such application would be higher if the distance between two noisy locations is similar to the distance between the true locations. So we can still uh, preserving uh, the distance of uh, our friends uh, with uh, our true location. You know, using the uh, state of art location privacy, different privacy based location, we cannot uh, do some flexible job because uh, you see there are different uh, utility measurement, but still uh, we cannot do anything except uh, for uh, tuning the epsilon. So in this work, generally our goal is try to provide a flexible interface for location privacy to tween privacy and utility trade-offs. So what is our intuition? Our intuition here is uh, inspir we inspired it by the Blowfish privacy, uh, which is uh, uh, customizable and regular uh, statistic privacy. And um, they, they, they propose the privacy policies, which uh, includes the secrets, the definition of secrets and definition of constraints. Secrets means what are the secrets that we need to protect. Constraint means what does the adversary, adversary know. However, Blowfish privacy cannot be directly applied here because uh, essentially uh, the settings are uh, different. In statistic privacy, considering multiple user and aggregate query on database, however, in our setting, location privacy, they are a single user and point query on single uh, record. Our question is how to formalize such a location privacy policy and how to achieve it. So we, uh, we designed this uh, graph-based structure similar to the uh, privacy policy in Blowfish. Uh, but here, the node here is uh, we uh, define the node as uh, users of possible locations, a domain of uh, all possible locations. And age means if there is age between two locations, that means uh, we require the indistinguishability between the two locations. The two locations need to be indistinguishable to the attacker. So uh, for example, the red policy would be a good fit for location-based advertising, the application I just mentioned. Uh, because as you see, uh, this policy means allowing the application to access the semantic category, such as a restaurant or, or a shop of the URL location, but ensures indistinguishability among locations with the same category. So by this way, we can have a very high utility for such application because uh, noise location always has the same category of the true location uh, because uh, the perturbation only happens within the same categories. So then uh, uh, I will present the uh, definition of PGLP. The key idea is we only satisfy the indivisibility that defined in a given policy graph. So here's the definition uh, of our paper about location policy graph. The graph, uh, basically, it is, as I mentioned, it is uh, two uh, elements. One is uh, the a possible domain set S, and another is H, set of H. H, H means indivisibility, the privacy we want. And then the definition, borrowing idea from different privacy, but here we only protect defined H, which is uh, defined in the policy graph. And we don't care about other parts without age, the indivisibility without. Uh, let's uh, see the property of PGLP. In fact, PGLP is a generalization of DP based location uh, privacy definition, such as GU and and the Delta location side of privacy. Uh, in fact, we can see, according to our theorems, 
if the graph is something like this, then any mechanism studied by this PGLP with, with respect to G1 will also satisfy epsilon uh, GU distributivity. And similarly, under the setting of such a G2, policy graph G2, it is equal to delta location side privacy. And um, here are some mechanisms to achieve PGLP given uh, with respect to a given policy graph. Uh, basically, the key idea is to calibrate the sensitivity with respect to a given uh, policy graphs. And we uh, extended uh, the Laplace mechanism and the PIM mechanism to achieve our uh, definition with respect to uh, with respect to a given policy graph. Next, I will show how to use PGLP for reducing trajectories. So the challenge of uh, reducing trajectories using PGLP is that the user's possible looking site may change over time. As shown in this figure, in this figure, the left part it is the policy graph and the constraint and the uh, possible looking site shown in the uh, green circle at time t. And red part is uh, the same things uh, at time t plus one. <clears throat> so you can see um, maybe the attacker can know more information, more precise information about the user's possible possible look insight at time t uh, plus one. So the possible location site here, c t plus one is smaller than the previous one. We call this constraint domain. So uh, what happened by the existence of the constraint domain? The direct consequence is that uh, the policy graph will not be uh, the same. There would be uh, excluded node and disconnected node. For example, uh, in this figure, S6, uh, S1, uh, S4 are excluded node because they are originally in the uh, possible looking side, but now they are outside of, they are excluded of the uh, possible looking side. That means the attacker knows these are uh, impossible locations, so we cannot pr protect the privacy of them. And uh, there are another location like this one, S5, it is in the location set domain, the possible looking side. However, uh, there are not any uh, edge between it and other locations like S2 and S3 in the uh, possible looking side. So we call this disconnected node. That means originally it is connected, but now it is disconnected. And uh, we found that if there's some disconnected node, the location exposure will happen possibly. For example, if the user is at the S5, the attacker may be able to figure out her true location as S5. But interestingly, we find that not all of the disconnected node will lead to the location exposure, which also depends on the mechanisms. So uh, specifically, we call this uh, disconnected node that causes location exposure as isolated node. So the first thing we need to do is de uh, detect isolated node in a policy graph. So uh, we design algorithm three to find the isolated node. So given the mechanism, uh, the graph and the constraint domain, we find is that possible the mechanism to protect the uh, isolated node or not. So um, we can give a yes, a, a true or false answer about a, a node is or not uh, isolated node. And next, uh, we propose algorithm to uh, fix this. So how, how we fix this? Idea is we repair the policy graph uh, by adding an edge to protect the isolated node. So uh, the idea is uh, simple, is we just uh, to add an edge, add more indivisibility uh, in the policy graph, so uh, we can protect the isolated node caused by the constraint domain. But since uh, which kind of edge should we add in the policy graph? So there are many choices, and uh, we choose one with highest utility. Uh, intuitively, we just try to add all the edges 
because animal age can uh, be uh, uh, can be protecting the isolating node, but uh, one of the age will have the smallest sensitivity. That means highest utility. So we will, we will choose that node. And uh, in our paper, there will be more details. Uh, we can check that. And next, uh, I uh, will introduce this end-to-end uh, -end framework for location tree 3 ds uh, We designed this uh, uh, framework to pipeline the calculation of constrained domain isolated uh, node detection, policy graph repair, and private location release mechanisms. Uh, the basic idea is to utilize HMM model. We assume the transaction uh, probability and initial probabilities are known uh, in our framework. So, uh, last part is uh, experiments. So, in experiments, we try to uh, see how different location policy graphs affect the privacy utility trade offs. Uh, we set different policy graphs and also different uh, types of utility matrix to see uh, uh, what kind of uh, policy graph is best for uh, what kind of utility matrix. So uh, in fact, we test two types of uh, location policy graph, but, but there are four uh, looking policy graphs, uh, two types. Right, the first type is block graph. Block graph is something like, like this in the red figure. Uh, we, uh, Make sure the graph are the whole graph, policy graph, uh, consists of four uh, of many different small blocks, small uh, connected, fully connected subgraphs. And uh, there, as as you know, the age means indistinguishability. So any uh, two any two nodes who has uh, has an age means we need to protect uh, their uh, indistinguishability. Uh, so you know uh, this kind of block graph means attacker cannot distinguish any node inside the block inside each block, but he probably he can know where the node is come from, which block the node come come from. And the second type of location polygraph is a category graph. Uh, in the red figure, you can see. Uh, it is the uh, same as we previously mentioned. It's uh, very suitable for the location-based advertising applications. And uh, the first one is suitable for weather app applications because uh, uh, you can always provide noisy uh, location at the same block with the uh, true location. And for the utility, we also test three types of utility. The first one, Euclidean distance between noisy and true locations. The second one, uh, ER, is IL0 distance between the range query on noisy locations uh, and true locations. It is suitable for weather app, for example, uh, the, the, <clears throat> the utility is something like this, weather release location in the same region with the true location. And next is the EPY, IO0 distance between the category uh, category queries on noisy and true locations. Something like whether the release location is the same category with the true location. And it is suitable for location-based advertising. So here are some uh, results. Uh, basically, we verified that we can flexibly design suitable privacy policies with respect to uh, the desired uh, utility and privacy. So you can see uh, for the um, for the utility matrix E Euclidean's and the ER, the uh, range query, the GK9 is uh, the best one. And for the EPOI, POI application for the um, uh, location-based advertising, GPOI is the best one. Uh, the reason is uh, obvious, as, I mean, as we mentioned before, the policy designed uh, specifically for the specific, the, the policy is designed for the specific applications. So last, uh, I will conclude our paper with this uh, key takeaway. Uh, 
we can conclude that PGRP provide a rich interface. So last, uh, I will conclude our paper with this key takeaway that PGLP provides a rich interface for privacy utility trade-off in location privacy. And there are a few interesting future directions. For example, uh, how to design advanced mechanism for PGLP. Uh, and also it's interesting to design optimal privacy uh, policy graphs for location-based applications such as spatial crowdsourcing. Thank you.